Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? The zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So in this one, we are taking a look at six decks in six minutes that make use of the cards changed in today's OTA. First up, we have Electra. Electra has been buffed to a 1-2. I've been wanting an Electra buff for basically forever, and I'm really happy to see it. Uh, they do mention in the notes this might not be the last change she goes under, so maybe this won't be her final form. Uh, but I do think the change here is actually fairly meaningful. Really can't overstate just how bad a one stat line card is in this game. Uh, so just bringing it up to two makes it feel a lot less bad. And uh, I think Electra will possibly have a home in the bounce deck we have here. I've played quite a lot of this bounce deck without Electra. I've actually even seen one or two other people trying Electra in it a while ago. Uh, and I think in the wake of the other balance changes made to the game today, maybe it has a chance at finally taking off. So the idea is we are spamming a bunch of cheap stuff down, uh, and then we are trying to bounce it up into our hand with Falcon and Beast. We have Bishop and Hitmonkey as possible payoffs for playing all the cards over and over again. Uh, Havoc, kind of a neat include. We're often playing this card on turn 5 or turn 6. He gets pretty big, especially in combination with Bast, and we often don't need all our energy anyway. If you are looking for a budget replacement for Havoc, I would consider something like Iron Man to help go tall, or maybe Shadow King or Shang-Chi for a more reactive element. Next up, we have Hercules. So Hercules was buffed from a 4-6 to a 4-7. This is actually the first natural 4-7 we have, I think, ever had in Marvel Snap, so that's kind of cool. I've really been enjoying this Phoenix Force deck personally. Uh, I think Phoenix Force is kind of underrated right now, and especially with the change happening to Blob to hopefully open up some metagame diversity, I think Phoenix Force might finally have its day in the sun. So obviously, Phoenix Force is your main combo you're going for here, and we have pretty much every tool available to help make that happen. Dagger also got to change this patch, going from a 2-2 two -two that gets plus 2 to a 2-0 two that gets plus 3. Uh, so interested to see how that might change things for her. Uh, in general, Phoenix Force is our main plan with this deck. We want to blow up multiple man, bring it back with Phoenix Force, spam it all over the board. I have played another slightly different version of this with Heimdall as an additional top end piece to help out with our move combo shenanigans in the games where we don't get our Phoenix Force stuff going. So if you want to throw in Heimdall for that added combo potential, you can probably do that. I think I would do it in place of something like Hulkbuster. But yeah, I don't think Hercules is going to make or break this deck, and, you know, one stat change here isn't the biggest buff in the world, uh, but I think he was already fairly solid in this deck, as the synergy with just moving your cards around and bouncing them back around has been pretty decent, and having a little bit more stats on him certainly doesn't hurt, so if you're looking for something to try out Hercules, Phoenix Force is the way I would go. Next up is Blob, the only card that got a nerf in this patch, so Blob went from a 6-4 to a 6-0, and uh, now he has a cap. So Blob will eat cards in your deck until he hits 15 or more power. And what's the best way to make sure that Blob gets as big as possible? Well, just run a lot of big stuff in your deck. And that's what this deck is doing. So shout out to Martian Boo for this one. I saw him playing this on stream a few weeks back and uh, it seemed really fun. I made one slight change to it. He had Scar, I put in Jubilee as I want another way to ramp out some big stuff, but basically just a big lockjaw deck, Thor, Jane, shenanigans, uh, but we also have the Haivo stuff. You can toss your Haivo away into the jaw. Haivo lets us have a bigger Hulk and get a little bit more value out of our Wasp, which is nice. And with magic, we have the backup plan of being able to go the skip on turn six into She-Hulk Infinite on the final turn of the game. I've been fairly impressed with this deck. As someone who generally enjoys Lockjaw, Jane, Thor stuff, I really have liked this quite a lot. And if you really want to make those big blobs still, I think this is probably one of the better ways of doing it. And then one more blob deck for the memers out there, uh, Mr. Blob, Mr. Negative Blob. So. Uh, you can't have a card go to zero power without it getting memed on in terms of it being a Mr. Negative Inclusion. So uh, that's exactly what we aim to try out here. Now you might think, well, Blob isn't really good with Mr. Negative, right? Because you want to run all these zero power cards that don't really work with it. Uh, but basically the idea is, you know, you can draw him as a zero power card off the Jane and whatever handful of cards are still left in your deck post negative flip uh, should have some pretty decent power. And you don't really need Blob to be the biggest thing in the world because he will be a zero cost six power at base. Uh, so even if he only eats, let's say, a flipped Iron Man or a flipped Professor X or Darkhawk, he's still a pretty big body for zero cost post negative. So 
I think if anything, it's worth just trying it out for the fun factor. Uh, we're also running Professor X in here as he's another card that got kind of boosted in negative the last time he got balance changed. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty standard negative list. We have Wong and Ironheart to spread out some power across the board. Uh, you could consider going a slightly different direction in this deck if you want to, uh, with things like the Zola Panther combo. I opted to go with the Professor X Alioth route instead, uh, but if you want to get a bit more Wong value and potentially have some bigger stuff for Blob to eat in the deck, you could very easily put in uh, Black Panther and Zola in those spots. Then we have the Selene buff. Selene got buffed going from negative one power to two power. That is a huge amount of power increase. Uh, Selene was a very, very bad card. Uh, she wasn't even making the cut in Annihilus lists and in the patch notes, they pretty much said, well, when we designed this card, we wanted her to combo with like Widow and Viper and both those cards have been adjusted. It's made Selene really bad. So we want to try and give her uh, more playability on her own. And the way I think that is going to work is by using her in a Bounce Annihilus deck. So now you have a bit more incentive to be playing this card because it is not actively taking power away from your side in the games where you do not get your Annihilus. Uh, and it also just helps you get negative power on things like Hood and Green Goblin to send over to the opponent. Uh, we're running Shadow King here, mainly as a way to tech against people still running Blob. Uh, but you could even use that Shadow King to potentially remove the debuffs if it happens to drop on a card you don't really want to get debuffed. And with Beast and Falcon, we can apply multiple debuffs to cards in the opponent's hand, making them even harder to play or punishing them if they happen to play out the card that Selene hits with her debuff. I've always liked Green Goblin with Werewolf. I found that synergy to be really fun as you can move the Werewolf around more uh, while not having to worry as much about your board space. Century Nihilist stuff still goes pretty hard, and just in general, all the other one drops get very solid value out of being bounced to the hand and replayed, alongside being able to ping our werewolf all over the board. And last but not least, we have Destroyer. So OGs will remember Destroyer used to have 16 power, and he was actually kind of the, the tier one deck when Marvel Snap first came out. Uh, so we're trying to revisit that style of deck, but with some new toys added to it. This is Ongoing Destroyer. So the idea is we are running a critical mass of ongoing cards. Pretty much every card in this deck has ongoing, uh, except for the two finishers in Spectrum and Destroyer. What was really powerful about this deck back in the day uh, was the fact that your opponent often couldn't play around both Spectrum and Destroyer on the final turn of the game. Now, is the one point power boost to Destroyer likely to bring this archetype back to a high tier potential? Probably not, if we're being honest. Uh, the game has gotten way, way more powerful since then. So 16 power as a raw stat stick isn't quite as backbreaking as it used to be, but we did also get some new interesting additions to our ongoing cards that kind of helped this deck out a bit. So we have Mobius to limit the cost reducing potential of the opponents. Miss Marvel so we can spread our power out a bit across the board more easily. Man Thing to punish the opponent for playing smaller cards in a given lane. Luke Cage, which helps offset that, or our Lizard, Iron Man to really boost up a lane so we can go taller than the opponent, and then Spectrum can spread that power around across the board, while Destroyer just provides a ton of power in a single lane, and we have things like Armor and Cosmo to offset that downside. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for our six new decks for the new patch. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. As always, decks will be in the description if you want to grab any of them to import into the game. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.